So we're here to talk about Star Battle Puzzles. They're a style that seem to have some of the widest variation in solving times, and that may be because some of the basic techniques just aren't as familiar. So we felt uh, we'd go through last month's special puzzle with a June theme, and then this week's uh, special July 4th puzzle to give a sense of how to solve these. The first thing uh, I'll certainly know to do is to recognize that in any 2x2 two two box, there can only be one star. And in a region like this, you can start the puzzle by effectively lassoing these cells and leaving behind the singleton and knowing that there must be a star in this cell and the rest of these are not used. You could make a similar deduction here. Those aren't used and you get to a point where one of these two cells is a star. Anytime you get a place like this where one of two cells is going to be the star, you can mark off things around it. And what we've actually left ourselves right now is a single row in the N that has both of the stars. And that will cancel the rest of that row over here. You'll see that the same sort of 2x2 two two block idea works in this corner that this shape can be split into two 2x2 two two blocks. They actually have an L triomino shape here because this fourth cell that would complete the 2x2 two two isn't in the group, but because one of these three cells will have a star, that cell can't have one, this cell can't have one. We actually get a feedback where uh, there's a, now a, a star must be in these, that cancels these get this, and this actually cancels the columns fully. And so, kinds of things you should just get more used to thinking about is how to subdivide regions into groups that can eliminate. Um, we made a note about the N having a horizontal connection here. For instance, the bottom of the U right now is only in row 5, so everything else in row 5 is not usable. I guess I'll go over and sort of better darken the unused cells here. Now, there's a kind of pattern that, you know, maybe it's less frequent that I'll mark it, but it's sometimes the case, like, when you know that a, a star can be in a, a 1 by 3 pattern, like this, or like this, Somewhere in these three cells is a star, and somewhere in these three cells is the second star. What it means is if you see something of this sort, that the cells immediately touching the center of the 1 by 3 or 3 by 1 pattern can't be used. If a star was here, for instance, it would clear out all of the places where we know a star must sit, knowing that at most one star is in these two cells. And so around the N, you can make this particular deduction, which is that the stars can't be sitting near this row because they'll cancel too many things here, or a star there will cancel too many things there. And so we get some more quick clearances this way. We're now in a situation where we filled uh, these two columns completely, so we'll put that in. And you may be asking yourself sort of where to look next. Here now is a different kind of trick, but uh, it's also sort of connected to what we marked here. This column itself is almost uh, uh, completely empty now of usable cells. There are three potential choices, and we need to place two stars in them, which means again, at least one of these two cells, and at least one of these two cells has a star. And this cell, which sees two of the three spots, can't be used or would eliminate too many. Uh, if we marked off that this column was used down here, that's not a usable place. That's not a usable place. We're left with just these two options to finish out the end. Uh, we're now in a state where, having cleared that cell, we have just two options left for the J. That will fill that shape up, so we're going to have one star up here somewhere, and one star up here. Coming across on this side, here we have a similar situation. This is the, maybe the, the theme of the puzzles. You keep getting groups of three cells that need to take at least one star. So this needs at least one star, that needs at least one star. So this can't be to the bottom. That forces 
those cells. Similarly, this star can't be at the bottom. It'll eliminate too many things nearby. This cancels across the whole set of rows. What you'll see consequently is that the stars push uh, downwards in this column. There's one cell left in that row and one cell left in, after elimination in that row for these stars. If we just mark off what's unusable, we get to a situation like this. In this column, this region here will only get one cell star from uh, <coughs> column 8, so it must have one cell in column 9. Marking in those stars, we get to the state. And it's not so hard a puzzle, but hopefully it shows you about how to mark cells in smaller groups and how to think about cells uh, nearly completing rows and columns and interacting with each other, sort of marking unusable cells a lot better. So. This is the larger challenge, but it actually isn't, in this case, too much harder, uh, in part that sort of some of the same things we discussed in the last puzzle, for instance, that uh, six by one region with three stars is gonna have stars in those marked spots, which will eliminate things above and below. We can do a similar thing with this region. Get those cells unused. Uh, if a region is just in one row, um, it eliminates everything else in its set. Because of the band nature, uh, essentially the stripe nature of this puzzle with 13 striped regions and the 14th uh, normal flag region, which would be blue if we colored this puzzle, you can look to subdivide regions that fully complete a set of rows or columns. For instance, this region here and this region here, which dips into another row, there are only two regions in these two rows, which means that all of the stars, the six total, for these two rows are in these regions here. Consequently, any cell that's in another row can't actually be used. If a star was in what I just shaded off, you couldn't get six into this space. Here's another sort of situation like that. There are three in this region, there'll be three more in this region in some of these empty cells, which means this can't be used. Now, I haven't been fully careful to mark off cells which are unusable right near things I know, but I can do that now. And when I'm getting to a close spot like this, what I'm looking at is the fact that I have effectively three more two by two-ish kind of regions to, to mark. So I'm seeing there are some regions that just don't have uh, enough choices to place all of the stars in them if you're not very careful nearby. If we do the same sort of test down here with this region after we marked up uh, that big row, we actually get uh, two sure placements and one that's not sure yet, but if you place a star here, you force everything nearby to move over, and we actually pretty quickly complete that space. That may have been the first spot you'll make progress in this puzzle. We have three stars left to fill in this region. One's going to be there, one's going to be there, one's going to be there. You're going to say, well, why are you still doing that? Why didn't you just come down to here? Well, we'll finally sort of move our way down to the puzzle. This has only one possible allotment of things. And what you'll see is after we do the clearance, we get one star up here. Always when you make a notation like a star in this row, check if you actually know enough about the rest of the row to say, is there another star in this? or not, in this case, what you can say is that there are now three stars in this row, so we need to put the remaining star down one. It only has one option. Well, we've now cleared off this cell, so still looking at this row, it has two stars. We need to have one over here. Um, we have two options for those stars. This is three in that row that we've marked out as notes. Now this region which started rather large in the puzzle has a pretty cramped space. This is a typical pattern you'd see in a two-star star battle as having uh, a star necessarily there and a star necessarily here. In this case, we have an extra cell to place the third star in, but effectively everything in that region can be placed without more work at this time. And trying to track our progress, we're going to finally start to look vertically in this puzzle. We haven't done it yet, but we're at a moment where if we look carefully uh, we've completed the assignment of three exact stars in this column. This is uh, in the top or bottom cell here, but there are three now that will be in this column for sure, which means we can shade up the whole column and see that this 
possibility here, which had three options and only has one left, that now pushes everything to the right. We'll shade that in. Uh, this star pushes the star just above it over. We now get sign, which is one of these two cells. And we finish out over there. Shade the rest of that uh, row. And three stars in that column are here. Now, our big breakthrough is looking at column one. Let's not forget to track uh, other uh, columns nearby. And specifically, the, the concern is, can you get enough stars into the columns? For instance, columns two through four need to have a total of nine stars. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six places so far. So the three more have to be from the top over here. So one conclusion you can make is that there are no stars over there. Another is that specifically in column two, there are four open cells left to take the remaining two stars. And that kind of pattern you'll see several times is like this. This now actually forces column three to look like that. There is a star somewhere in this column up top, we don't know where. But now if we look at column five coming over, it has only three spaces left, and those are easily filled. We're now into column six and seven, trying to do some of the same math. Columns six and seven collectively need six stars. Right now we have one, two, three placed. Knowing about two by two squares, there can be at most one star in these four cells, and at most one in these four cells. So we now have one, two, three, four, five tentatively placed. The sixth star has to be there. And if we're careful about what we track, we've actually finished uh, the bottom row which leads to the marks I just made. Now, uh, we have a situation here where uh, this column has all but one cell remaining. It's gonna be in one of these three spots. I've said before, one consequence of that kind of placement is a, a shading option like this. But really, what we just did before with these two columns by counting, we can do on the right side of the puzzle by counting. So again, this kind of step of looking um, collectively at two columns at the same time. This group needs to have a total of six stars. Right now two are in the grid. We can place at most one in those four cells, at least one in these three cells. That now has four in the grid. That's a fifth and that's a exact sixth. Placing that star forces the clues around it. Placing the star also forces this row. That cancels a lot nearby. We've been looking at rows and columns a lot. One thing you'll need to get good at is also shifting back to region thinking. So this region now has lost most of its cells when that star moved to the top. And so it only has three total spots left. So the stars must go where we put them. Uh, this star pushes the potential placement there to the right. Uh, everything in this puzzle is kind of a domino effect. So having gotten three into that column, the ones nearby go to the left. We'll see actually some of the places we just placed also place three in this column. So again, a domino effect. Things going to the left. Uh, this column actually has three uh, completed things as well. So let's just mark off things we know. This column has one cell left to fill. This column has one cell left to fill. So we've now finished the top row. This pushes stars down. This note says to push that down. Uh, this needs to start somewhere. We have three in this column, so we can deal with that here. This coming across needs to be in the top, needs to be in the top. Looking carefully, we can't use that cell because of a neighboring star. We get to this final pattern, a nice sort of square in the upper left, and we finish that puzzle. And collectively, I hope uh, between these two star battles, you've learned a little bit about how I go at looking at the puzzle and notating star positions and getting to the end. And, uh, Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough and we'll see you again.